Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll talk about few skills that can keep you updated in the space of DevOps and Cloud. Technically, these skills can keep you in the top 1% DevOps and Cloud engineers. This video is going to be interesting. I'll discuss what are these skills and I'll explain you how you can use these skills. So just make sure you watch this video till the end. First and foremost, we all know how quickly AI is advancing, right from assistants, agents to MCP recently, there is a lot of advancement. And this is definitely threat to few skills in the future. I've told this multiple times, AI cannot replace any job at this point of time. You know, it hasn't reached to that potential. However, in future, it can be threat to few domains. But the important thing is that DevOps and cloud is constantly evolving. What do I mean by that? There are new verticals in the space of DevOps and cloud. And if you learn these skills or if you learn these verticals, you can keep yourself secure from AI or your job is secure from AI. So let's quickly understand what are these skills. First one is MLOps. What is MLOps? It is machine learning operations. So basically, a lot of companies are focusing on developing their models. So as part of MLOps, you can automate the machine learning lifecycle. Just like traditional DevOps, which is focused on software development lifecycle, MLOps focus on machine learning lifecycle. And this is definitely a new opportunity. If you are a DevOps engineer, you already know what are the practices. If you incorporate these practices to machine learning lifecycle, you can transition yourself into MLOps engineer. Or as a DevOps engineer, you can take that responsibility as well. So MLOps is one of the future skills that you can focus. Second one is AI Ops. AOps is AI for IT operations. Basically using AOps, you can predict future anomalies or you can predict any future issues for your organization. A basic example. Let's say you work for e-commerce company and you have the metrics, logs and traces or you have historical data of the orders for the e-commerce application. Using AOps solution, you can predict any unexpected number of orders or maybe you can tell your organization that at a particular date or at a particular time, you can expect huge amount of orders and your company can be prepared for that. Basically by scaling according to the requirement or maybe taking the required action. This is a very basic example of AOps. Third one is FinOps. What is FinOps? FinOps is basically evaluating your cloud billing. FinOps is more or less related to cloud. So understanding your cloud billing currently, estimating how much your company is currently spending on cloud and making sure your cloud billing is reduced. Some or the other way it is related to cloud cost optimization. So, you know, FinOps is modern cloud cost optimization, but also deals with current cloud cost or the current billing and reporting as well as dashboards. This is a very promising skill if you ask me. So basically, if you're a DevOps engineer, it's very easy to transition yourself into a FinOps engineer in future or just learn that skill. And it's going to add a great addition to your resume. Fourth one is AI assisted DevOps. Now this is very, very simple. If you're already a DevOps engineer, just incorporate AI assistants, AI agents into your day-to-day -day activities and even prompt engineering using which you can learn AI assisted DevOps. I've done a complete playlist on it. There are already eight videos in the playlist or even more than that. I'll put the link in the description right from prompt engineering to using 
agents using crew ai developing your own agents working with the agents you can learn all of that in the playlist so as the devops is a fourth skill that you can focus on fifth one is secure supply chain or secure software supply chain what you can learn as part of this skill you know it is advanced version of devsecops or it's a skill that is focused on ci cd if you're already working on ci cd you can just make sure you track all the dependencies of your application and ensure the direct dependencies or transitive dependencies of your application are secure there are few things like s bomb software bill of materials and there are few tools that can help you in this space it's a very simple addition if you are already working in the space of ci cd this is a fifth skill sixth one ebpf now this is a very very interesting one of course it is little complicated but if you have some time you can start understanding what is ebpf this particular skill focuses on advancing or enhancing your linux kernel linux kernel development is not that easy you know very rarely you see uh, improvements in the linux kernel because it's very difficult to update it add new features to it but ebpf is a method where you can indirectly add new features to your linux kernel and this is going to help you in the space of observability every transaction goes through kernel so it helps you in the distributed tracing metrics as well as logs in fact in future you might reach to a point where using ebpf you don't even have to define any metrics logs any metrics or traces in your application you know this is just a prediction but at this point of time if you already have metrics logs and traces ebpf is going to provide more details about your application so it's just like advanced observability so this is skill number 6 wasm so wasm is also something very promising it helps you deploy your ai workloads onto the kubernetes cluster or even docker containers so today even open ai deploys their workloads onto kubernetes cluster so you know building and deploying the machine learning workloads or ai workloads is not that easy looking at different platforms that you have today whether it's x64 or whether it is arm every time building so many ai workloads on different platforms is not that easy wasm acts as a layer and you don't have to build your ai workload for different platforms for a lot of platforms so it is going to reduce your efforts in the space of build and deployment especially related to ai workloads so wasm is one of the skill that you can focus on finally kubernetes management abhishek we already work on kubernetes cluster upgrades or kubernetes management but kubernetes management with respect to ai workloads let me make it simple today you already work on managing your kubernetes cluster but in future the size of kubernetes cluster is going to be huge because if you want to deploy machine learning workloads the size of cluster is going to be high and number of name spaces on the cluster is also going to be high this is where you see advancement of v cluster or projects like kubesaw so using your kubernetes name spaces as tenants is something that you do today but using your kubernetes name spaces as virtual clusters is going to grow so you can learn things like v cluster kubesaw to cube yourself updated in the space of devops and cloud of course i'll make more videos on these topics because right now i'm just explaining them in the one liners but if you are really interested i'll make videos on individual topics and i'm also going to cover a lot of tools like 
for ml ops we will learn about ml flow kube flow for kubernetes management we will learn about v cluster kube saw when it comes to finops i'll talk more about open cost cast ai so there are different tools in this space in each of these skill there are multiple tools that are evolving so i have plans to make more videos on them so yeah if you have any questions related to this topic i'm more than happy to help do let me know in the comment section see you all in the next one take care bye bye